right, welcome to part two of lesson 24, activity two. We already did notice and wonder, so we're on to the next slide. Let me grab a better color for you guys. Okay, so it looks like we are going to be looking at Philadelphia first. And you have a table that tells you it's the same table we just talked about, isn't it? The number of speakers, so the people who speak English, Spanish, other Indo-European, and Asian. Um, it's just going to be European languages. I don't know what the Indo, Indonesia maybe? Okay, based on the data, are there more people in Philadelphia who only speak English or more people who speak a language other than English, show how you know. Number two, what is the difference between the number of people who speak only English and those who speak another language? Show how you know. So I underlined the word difference. What, what, does, that, what does difference mean, Bella? Subtracting. Yeah, so number two, you might be doing some subtracting. Number three, Chicago is a city with a similar population to Philadelphia. So um, here, now we're looking at Chicago. You're going to figure out how many more speakers of Spanish and other Indo-European languages are in Chicago than in Philadelphia. Show your reasoning. And part B, this is going back to yesterday's talk. How do you know your answer is reasonable? Can you do some estimating and rounding? Yes. yes. So you could, you could do some estimating. And then we're going to share. Okay, guys, about 10 minutes. Work with your partner. Um, somebody get the lights. Uh, we're going to go over number three together um, because... I think that one is the most challenging. So, Chicago is a city with a similar population to Philadelphia. So we're comparing cities. Books should be open. Mason, Miles, open your books. You're following along. So we're looking at this table. Question A, how many more speakers of Spanish and other Indo-European languages are in Chicago than Philadelphia. Step one, you have to figure out how many Spanish and Indo-European um, language speakers are in each city. This is a two-step problem. So first, I've got to add... 422,568 plus 25,777. Everybody, what is 8 plus 7? 15. 15. Put my 5 down, carry my 1. What is 1 plus 6 plus 7? 14. 14. Come on, that's not a 4. Come on, pen. Carry my one. What's one plus five plus seven? Thirteen. Why is it being weird all of a sudden? Okay, three. Carry my one. One plus two. Okay. And four. I think it's being weird. Four. And four. Okay. Goodness, that was hard to write. All right, so we know for Chicago, there's 448,345 Spanish and other Indo-European languages. Now we have to do the same thing for Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I'm going to add 127,352 plus... 6,750. 2 plus 0? 
Two. Five plus five? Ten. Put the zero down. Carry the one. One plus three plus seven. Carry my one. Fourteen. Three. One. Okay. So for Philadelphia, 134,102. Okay. Now that I've figured that out for step one, step two, we need to subtract. So I'm going to take my bigger number, 448,345, and I'm going to subtract my smaller, I forgot what it was, 134102. 134. 102. What is 5 minus 2? 3. 4 minus 0? 4. 3 minus 1? 2. 8 minus 4? 4. 4 minus 3? 1. 4 minus 1? 3. Okay, so my answer is 314,243. Raise your hand if you got that. Those of you who made it to number 3. Awesome! Pat yourself on the back. That was a hard one. Here's what I want to know. How do you know your answer is reasonable? Okay, hey, Brett. Um, because me and my partner got the same answer. We didn't have to do it. So you and your partner got the same answer. Yeah. Um, so probably if you both did your computation correct, probably right. Okay. How else can you tell that your answer is reasonable? Okay, Michael. By, like, um, you can, um, never mind, I forgot. Okay. How could we know? Chase? If you, um, if you... You know, I could look at it this way. If I just glance at these two numbers, oops, maybe I need to charge my pen. Okay, if I look at those two numbers, I might say, oh, that's about 425,000 plus 25,000. That's about 450. And then if I look at these two numbers, I might say uh, like 130,000. So if I subtracted 450 minus 130, it'd be about what? 320? Yeah. About that. And is that about what I got? Yeah. Yeah. So I could do some estimating and rounding in my head to figure out if it is reasonable. Questions? Do we need to go over number one or two? No. Okay, I feel like we really were doing good with that one. Okay. Um, we shared. All right, so today we performed addition and subtraction on very large numbers, right guys? Were those very large? Yes. Even though most of us use, I would say all of us used the standard algorithm, we didn't all add or subtract the numbers in the same way. Okay, in the second activity you had to add a series of numbers in a table. Did it matter which ones you added or subtracted first? When the numbers being added or subtracted have many digits, it is easy to make an error, to regroup or carry incorrectly, or to get the digits mixed up. Guys, what are some ways we could check our answers? Hadley? Use a different strategy. Michael? Um, maybe uh, um, compare with other people. You know, it... It's not cheating if you already have an answer, and they already have an answer, and you're just comparing, right? As long as it's not a test, right? Or an exit slip, a cool down. Okay, so you could compare. Because sometimes, I mean, how many times do you look at your friend's work in math, and you go, oh, I forgot to carry the one. Or I forgot to add that, right? Okay, hopefully you're not going, oh, the answer is five. That's not going to help you out, right? Okay. Okay. All right, what are some common errors? I kind of just told you one. Brooks. 
um, forgetting to add your zero in long division. Forgetting, oh, uh, like the, multiplication. In multi the zero placeholder? Yeah. Yep, sure. Hadley. Like to remember all of the numbers? Like if, like how I was flipping between slides and if you were going between papers, making sure that you're being precise and writing down the correct numbers. Yeah, Emma. Um, maybe if you forget to carry the right one, because I always do that. Sure, that happens. Or if you forget to count the one. Okay, Michael. Um, maybe you. Maybe sometimes you forget to add the zero, like if it's um, 207, you might accidentally put 27. Oh, and forget that 207 has yeah, a zero in the middle? Yeah, one time I was doing, it happened to me. Yeah, yeah. Brooks, last one. Um, you could, um, Okay, you could forget your math facts, maybe. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> don't forget those. Um, it looks like we have a cool down involving Philadelphia and the number of people who are certain ages. You have two questions to answer. Um, so, you're going to do your cool down. Just took a picture of it. What, yeah, yes I did. What are we looking at? Picture. Because I took a picture of it? Yeah. How do you think I do the cool down? I screenshot it. It's so oh. important. Uh huh. It's fine. Hey, everybody watching this, I'm still recording. Put your hands down. <laughs> All right. Today, what you're doing next, you are doing your cool down, you're turning it into your homework hotspot, and then. I know you guys are going to want to no. kill me. No. 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 They love the centers. It's their no. favorite thing. No.